guys so I'm doing another random video because I actually got a lot of positive feedback on the last one that I did so thank you guys it seemed like a lot of you really understood where I was coming from and I just really appreciated everything that everyone had to say so I am just sitting here reading my cards at night sometimes I do this during the day with a cup of coffee but I tend to get interrupted a minimum of 26 times if my children are about. So sometimes I like to do it at night when it's quiet, but I've gotten uh, awareness. I was going to say acceptance, but awareness. So it's the Oracle of Oddities. And then I have the Eight of Pentacles. So this is the Marigold Tarot. The Four of Cups and the Knight of Swords. I haven't completely processed what this might mean, but I tend to like to. I stopped pulling a card once a day because, um, or I stopped pulling just a single card once a day because I honestly felt like it just really wasn't giving me that much. My arm is getting tired. Unbelievable. Also, check this out. My husband made this. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, I, I found that pulling just one card once a day just wasn't giving me enough. So I wanted to be able to have a stronger re reading where I could, my cards would talk to each other and I could kind of understand the relationship that each card has with one another when, um, when doing a reading. And I start, decided to start using oracle cards as sort of a either um, journaling prompts or a uh, like a significator. Oh my god! <laughs> um. So yeah, I just found I had so many issues with drawing one card because I just I felt like I was getting just a sminy, a sminy, sminy. Wow, uh, a tiny small, I did this in one of my other videos recently too, a uh, tiny small fragment of, you know, what that card could potentially tell me or just what, like, I don't want to draw a card, one card to describe how my day is going to go. It just doesn't seem, this didn't work for me. So, you know, that's, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that I will be having a hysterectomy um, on October 18th. As you guys know, I have endometriosis and I've had four surgeries so far to treat this monster of a disease. It took me 12 years to get a diagnosis. I was diagnosed through surgery at 26 and I was able to have two kids remarkably. I don't know how, but I did. Um, even the doctors say that they aren't sure, but at 35, I'll be 36 in January, I'm done. I, plus the doctors don't think I should have any more kids, and I have a <clears throat> decent risk for cancer, um, just through genetics and losing my mom to cancer, and, you know, I just lost my uncle, my mom's brother, to cancer, and it's been been crazy um so i've made the decision to go ahead with the surgery and i've made the decision to do it as soon as possible for a lot of reasons but it's strange because being a witch i've spent so much of my time as a witch embracing cycles cycles that we go through in life, cycles that, that nature goes through, and how those tend to mirror and interact with one another. And it's helped me give comfort, get, get comfort, in some of the cycles that I experience in life that aren't so great. <laughs> um, and I think that's just one of the, the powers that I, I get from, you know, being a practicing witch. But... I'm noticing now that motherhood didn't come on my terms and it was more of a I had to make a decision that I didn't I wasn't even sure if I was ready to make 
and now you know removing the part of my body that has carried my children and but also giving me so much pain it's very bittersweet and so I'm thinking that as I go into the next cycle in life even though I'm not I, I'm very much ready for this but at the same time there's so much spiritual I don't even know that's getting kicked up with this and it made me start to realize I was thinking more about offerings and I'm almost wondering if the act of going through this surgery and getting rid of this part of my body I could consider doing a parting ritual or an offering doing consider doing it as an offering to my goddesses that I work with um particularly Freya and Frigg I think would be probably the most fitting for this situation but you know I think it's, it's interesting like I'm honestly thinking can I offer my uterus to these deities and obviously I won't have the physical organ um, it's going to be removed and taken to pathology of course but the concept of this is fascinating to me in the sense that I'm about to undergo something that's going to be changing me in many ways and it's a decision that I've made for my health and uh, my mental health and to hopefully better my life but it's also you know there's a lot coming up with it as I've mentioned so I don't know. <laughs> Just drink a ton of water again. Um, for anyone who has gone through something like this, do you think that you could offer your organ that you're about to lose? Or um, even the experience that you're about to have? Say you don't even have uh, a surgery where you lose an organ but you you go through some type of difficult time or um, oftentimes you know I see those sorts of things as an initiation in a way as we move on to the next cycle and you know I've had several experiences in my life that I think would be um, you know I could describe as an initiation to a different chapter in my life and this is definitely a different chapter that's going to be opened uh, you know knowing that I am done having children and knowing that you know now we're moving forward to another part of life and where does what doors does that open and I just want to be able to thank my goddesses for giving me the ability to have my children I actually did do a spell to conceive both of them before I did and um, I use the same spell each time and the first one was when I was still working with the Morgan I no longer work with her and then the second with my second son I called upon Freya and my pregnancy with my second son is what started my connection to Freya and now she is the only deity that I have ever dedicated myself to so to me, I think that's special, and um, I think it calls to do something special as I step into this other phase of life. So, you know, once again, I want to celebrate cycles, and I want to celebrate changes. I want to celebrate where do I go from here, and what's the next step, and also to tell you guys that I am going to be having another surgery, and, you know, my videos might be... A little quiet for a while to recover but um <clears throat> also just bring you guys into my head noise head noise on this <laughs> i hope you guys are enjoying these kind of like vlog style videos i just felt like i was putting too much pressure on myself to have the perfect setup and even then it wasn't perfect plus one of my ring lights broke <laughs> and um 
you know, sometimes I feel like having this more candid rawness, bringing even more of that into my videos is kind of just giving you guys more of me. And that's what this is. This is just, this is me. And I enjoy doing this. I enjoy um, having a connection with others on something I'm deeply passionate about, which is my spiritual practice. So if it means that sometimes you get shaky cam and water burps and uh, me having dyslexic moments and all that, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. But anyway, thank you for watching guys. And as always, blessed be.